Now, during the 2010s, Daniel Ricciardo soared to the zenith of his Formula 1 career, and his potential to win the World Championship was unmistakable. Widely held as one of Australia's finest Formula 1 drivers, his name graced every F1 enthusiast's lips. Affectionately known as the Honey Badger, Daniel Ricciardo has a reputation that extends beyond the racetrack. His interviews are like treasure troves of humour, often leaving listeners in stitches. This lively persona is a central highlight in Netflix's Drive to Survive series. His ability to connect with others in a genuine and approachable way has solidified his status as a likeable figure in the racing community. Having competed in an impressive 234 races, Danny Ricciardo has undeniably left an indelible imprint on the world of Formula 1. With eight race victories to his name, his track record is a testament to his skill and determination. Yet, there's one elusive accolade that's eluded him, the coveted F1 driver's title. Ricardo's racing journey has been a roller coaster of triumphs and challenges, a story marked by both highs and lows. The flame of Daniel Ricardo's passion for racing was sparked at the tender age of nine when he took his first exhilarating ride in a kart. Starting at the Tiger Kart Club, young Ricardo quickly displayed his natural talent, impressing everyone with his skills on the track. As he grew, he embraced more challenging competitions, participating in the Western Australian Formula Ford Championship in 2005. And despite driving a 15-year-old Van Diemen car, he managed to secure 8th place overall, showcasing his determination and potential. His journey, however, wasn't all smooth sailing. At the Sandown Raceway in Melbourne, he faced a tough test with the least 13-year-old Van Diemen. Unfortunately, the aging car didn't perform well, leading to a challenging weekend with not-so-good performances. Ricardo's skills caught the attention of the Red Bull Junior team. After an impressive sixth-place finish in the Formula Renault 2.0 Italia in 2007, this marked a turning point in his career as he moved on to the competitive Formula 3 scene, making his debut at the Nurburgring in 2008. Despite encountering difficulties during races, Ricardo's determination shone through and continued to improve. In 2009, Daniel Ricciardo achieved a significant milestone in his racing career by clinching the British F3 Championship title. The taste of triumph in the British F3 series served as a stepping stone, paving the way for his progression to the highly competitive arena of Formula Renault 3.5 in the subsequent year. As he transitioned to Formula Renault 3.5, Ricciardo was determined to continue his upward trajectory in the racing world. The 2010 season presented new challenges and opportunities, and he embraced them with the same fervour that had fueled his journey thus far. However, Ricardo finished that season just two points behind the champion, Mikhail Aloshin. Danny Ricardo got his first taste of Formula 1 action during the young driver's test for Red Bull Racing at Circuito de Jerez in 2009. It was a pivotal moment that set the wheels in motion for his remarkable journey. It was during the final day of testing that Ricardo stole the show as he delivered an awe-inspiring performance by securing the fastest time of the entire event. This led Red Bull's racing team manager, Christian Horner, to put forward the idea that Daniel Ricardo could potentially take over the test and reserve driver role from his former 2010 World Series teammate, Brendan Hartley. This suggestion marked an interesting development in Ricardo's career trajectory, indicating his growing presence within the team's plans. However, both Ricardo and Hartley shared responsibilities as test and reserve drivers for Red Bull Racing and its sister team, Scuderia Toro Rosso. However, as circumstances evolved, Hartley eventually departed from his role at Red Bull. As the calendar turned to November 16th, 2010, an opportunity arose for Ricardo's to showcase his abilities. He stood as the sole representative of Red Bull Racing during the driver's test at the Yas Marina circuit. This platform offered him a chance to prove his mettle, and he seized it with unwavering determination. During the test, Ricardo's prowess shone brilliantly. He not only demonstrated exceptional skills, but also exhibited a remarkable single lap speed that outshone his competitors. This standout performance was highlighted by his ability to complete a lap with astounding speed, surpassing Sebastian Vettel's qualifying lap from the preceding Saturday by an impressive 1.3 seconds. In 2011, Daniel Ricciardo continued his participation in Formula Renault 3.5, while simultaneously increasing his commitments in Formula 1. 
As part of his growing involvement in Formula One, he gained the opportunity to participate in Friday's first practice sessions for Red Bull's sister team, Toro Rosso. This exposure allowed him to acclimatize to the demands of the F1 environment. Daniel Ricciardo's big moment arrived at the British Grand Prix when he got the opportunity to step into the world of Formula One. He made his debut with HRT, a team that was struggling and positioned towards the back of the grid. In this race, he took the spot of Lorraine Carthy Kane in their lineup. After this debut, Ricciardo continued to race for HRT for the remainder of the season. Throughout the races, he demonstrated steady improvement and showcased his skills against more experienced teammates. This consistent progress didn't go unnoticed, leading to a significant leap in his career. As a result of his performances, he earned a promotion to join Toro Rosso's race team for the following year, which was a noteworthy step forward. Ricardo donned the colours of Scuderia Toro Rosso, partnering with Jean-Éric Verne for the 2012 and 2013 seasons. This marked a fresh chapter in Ricardo's journey. In 2013, Ricardo's journey continued with an extended contract with Toro Rosso, outperforming teammate John Eric Verne in both overall scoring and qualifying performance. Ricardo's exceptional qualifying skills caught the eye of Red Bull Racing. This recognition paved the way for his promotion to the senior team in 2014, filling the shoes of fellow Australian Mark Webber, partnering with the illustrious Sebastian Vettel. While many young drivers have struggled in their debut season with Red Bull Racing, Ricardo soared above expectations, showcasing his undeniable talent and determination. The curtain rose on his debut season with a flourish at the Australian Grand Prix. Qualifying in a stellar second place, he trailed only behind the illustrious Lewis Hamilton. His victories at the Canadian Grand Prix, Hungary and Belgium solidified his position as a force to be reckoned with. In a field dominated by Mercedes, he emerged as the lone non-Mercedes driver to clinch victory during the 2014 season, securing a commendable third place in the championship standings. The following year brought both challenges and growth. Paired with new teammate Danny Kvyat, Ricardo faced tougher competition. Kvyat narrowly edged him in the championship standings, signifying a period of adaptation and learning for Ricardo. Now, the year 2016 marked a seismic moment in Formula 1, with the emergence of a young prodigy named Max Verstappen on the F1 scene. He was promoted from Toro Rosso to take the place of Danny Kvyat at Red Bull. His entry had an immediate impact as he secured victory in his debut race, the Spanish Grand Prix. This win wasn't just a triumph, it was a declaration of a rising star poised to reshape the racing landscape. For Daniel Ricciardo, this presented a significant competition. Having two exceptional drivers within a single team was both a blessing and a challenge. The presence of Max Verstappen, a naturally gifted talent destined for greatness, alongside the proven victor Daniel Ricciardo, created a dynamic that Red Bull's bosses had to grapple with. The 2018 season brought these internal deliberations to the forefront. Ricardo's triumphant start in China and Monaco set the stage for his campaign, while Verstappen grappled with untimely errors. Despite the anticipation of Verstappen's future championship, his mishaps revealed his journey was still one of growth and maturation. However, Red Bull's faith in Verstappen was unshaken, which was evident by his contract extension till 2020. This decision cast Verstappen as the chosen heir, the anointed future world champion, while Ricardo's path faced uncertainties. The message was clear, Verstappen was their chosen torchbearer for future championships. As a result of this shifting dynamic, at the end of the 2018 season, the unexpected transpired. Daniel Ricciardo shocked the Formula 1 community by making a surprising move to Renault. This bold decision was a departure from the expected trajectory, causing a stir among fans, pundits and teams. Renault was a team on the rise and they seemed poised for greatness, gradually ascending the midfield ranks. With Daniel Ricciardo at the helm, their aspirations to claim the championship spotlight took shape. The reality, however, took an unexpected turn in 2019, as Ricciardo found himself finishing a distant ninth in the championship, a far cry from his Red Bull glory days. The next year, he only managed to secure two third-place finishes. However, as Ricardo wasn't getting any younger, the urgency to secure a world championship title became more apparent. The allure of joining a resurgent McLaren proved irresistible, especially as the team displayed promising signs of crafting a competitive race car. 
Adding weight to the decision was the contrast between Ricardo's season experience and the relative youth and limited exposure of McLaren's other driver, Lando Norris. This further tilted the balance in favour of McLaren. The prospect of leading the charge in a championship-worthy car was a compelling draw. McLaren's interest in Ricardo was apparent early on, and the deal eventually materialised in 2021. The transition to McLaren was, however, far from smooth. Adjusting to a new team always brings challenges. Ricardo struggled initially, while Norris flourished. The 2021 Monaco Grand Prix showcased Ricardo's struggles, as he finished outside the points, while Lando Norris had a podium finish. A pivotal moment arrived during the summer break, which acted as a reset for Ricardo. McLaren's performance saw an upswing, culminating in a remarkable victory for Daniel Ricciardo at the Italian Grand Prix. Despite the positive developments, the dynamics within the team remained intriguing. While Norris consistently performed well, strategic decisions often favoured Ricciardo. Nevertheless, McLaren's CEO, Zach Brown, expressed dissatisfaction with the team's overall performance. Entering the second year of his three-year contract with McLaren, Daniel Ricciardo was well aware of the challenge before him. To establish his position within the team, he needed to outshine his teammate Lando Norris and master the nuances of McLaren's cars. However, a seismic shift in Formula 1's technical regulations shook the foundation of the sport. This change had a profound impact on McLaren's performance, pushing them further down the order and creating a wider gap between their drivers. Ricardo's struggles was evident as he managed to secure points in only seven races with a lone top five finish in Singapore. His contribution accounted for a mere 23% of McLaren's total points, leading to the team losing fourth place in the constructor standings by the end of the season. As the season progressed, McLaren's dissatisfaction with the situation became evident. Midway through the season, they initiated talks to release Ricardo from his contract a year ahead of schedule. Their efforts proved fruitful, and they secured Formula 2 champion Oscar Piastri to replace him for the upcoming 2023 season. Well, this meant Ricardo would be without a racing seat for the 2023 season. Although he had opportunities to join teams that were positioned lower in the standings, he expressed his desire to take a break from the demanding world of motorsport. However, a series of conversations between Ricardo and Red Bull's team principal Christian Horner commenced during the Mexican Grand Prix in late 2022. These discussions ultimately led to a pivotal decision. Ricardo would make his return to Red Bull, taking on the role of their test and reserve driver for the 2023 season. Immersed in the team simulator, Ricardo showcased his prowess and ability to recapture his peak performance. The notion of his resurgence quickly found its way into the rumour mill, sparking speculations of his return to the Formula 1 grid. As concerns grew over Nick DeVries' performance at the junior team Alpha Tauri, Red Bull decided to fire DeVries and he was replaced with Daniel Ricciardo. And this marks the beginning of Ricciardo's return to competitive Formula 1. Now over to you. What if Ricciardo had chosen to remain with the Red Bull fold back in 2019? Could he have weathered the storm of Verstappen's ascent and emerge even stronger? Could the crucible of internal competition, fueled by a team that still held him in high regard, have propelled him to a new zenith? Let us know what you think in the comments section down below.